Reviewing the 2011 draft based purely on measurables, I wanted to review the players left on board undrafted who fit templates of draftable NFL players after, um, after David Arkin was picked. It's not easy after David Arkin guard was drafted in the fourth round, not another guard was drafted for 60 positions. There was a tackle drafted later in the fourth round, but my profiles for tackle are incomplete. I'm not sure what makes a fourth round guard, but I can say that according to Bird Dog 26's charts, that Arkin was undraftable. I can imagine a logic like he's almost fast enough, he's almost strong enough. If we can get him in a big time weight program, he'll grow. The problem is players from small schools don't usually improve their measurables meaningfully. It's impossible to gauge because once finished with the draft process, the numbers are never gauged again. But my point is, DeMarcus Ware went to a small school, Troy, and he came into the NFL already strong and already fast. And he's an all-time draft prospect. And David Arkin is not even just a guy, but you see, as small school players are represented by their measurables just as big school players are. They know if they want to be in the NFL, they have to lift weights and run fast. On top of that, a small school player can have the athletic tools but will have far less experience in cutting edge schemes. He can't even gauge their football acumen realistically, like how Dallas failed to project what uh, AK, what AOA would do. Um, and, you know, it's not like major program players never fail. But back to Arkin. Who was more draftable? I only have a few templates to work with. I haven't set up, um, I haven't set up something for judging backs yet, or quarterbacks, or wide receivers, or offensive tackles, so I'm skipping those positions. The fourth round of 2011 had a lot of wide receivers and running backs. Skipping those and looking at cornerbacks, none of them passed the test that were taken in the fourth round. Chimidi Chekwa had too much missing data. Casey Matthews, the linebacker, lifted 13 times when he needed to lift 23. Cortez Allen was real close to being the best prospect at cornerback in the fourth round. He misses because he had a 4.01 time in the 20-yard shuttle and needed a 4. I'm being really thorough here, though. He's been pretty good as a backup in Pittsburgh, which I guess his numbers almost good enough suggest he's capable of on a team that didn't make the playoffs the last few years and has lacked speed in the defensive secondary. See what happens when you make excuses for drafting players with red flag athletic markers in their skill set. I don't have tight end data, so I can't evaluate Julius Thomas, who's clearly the best pick in the late fourth round of 2011. None of these defensive backs taken after David Arkin in the fourth were considered draftable by the standards we've been using. 20-yard shuttle, uh, scoring at 4.12 seconds is why a cornerback gets burned by little fast guys. Now Richard Sherman runs too slow with short shuttle to be drafted, according to our standards. Uh, it's not shocking to see so many undraftable players, and perhaps the standards are too strict. However, so far, Richard Sherman is the only good defensive back I've come across in the second half of the 2011 draft. Everyone else is a backup at best, so maybe they, there just weren't that many good defensive backs in the late 2011 draft. Sherman does have a slow short shuttle. It goes to show what safety Earl Thomas does for him, covering his lack of quickness. If a team could get Earl Thomas on one side of the field and isolate Richard Sherman on the other with a fast guy, I bet you could burn Sherman. For the Broncos, Thomas, the tight end, or well, Wes Welker, should be able to free Demarius Thomas in he of 6'3", 4.3 speed, uh, isolated on Sherman deep, could be big yardages uh, for the Broncos. So after breaking down the numbers, I uh, have to wonder if the standards are too strict. Now I realize not every player is seen as a good NFL prospect. Uh, there's over 300 players at the Combine. And according to myth, or whatever rumors we have, most teams have less than 100 players on their board. Um, based on what I've done today, it seems like maybe there's only like 60 or even 50 players on an NFL team's board. So far, when I've processed the numbers for cornerbacks in the 2011 draft, there wasn't a single draftable cornerback, uh, according to the numbers I've been using. So there were 34 cornerbacks in the 2011 draft. 10 are too short. They are shorter than 5'11". They're not 71 inches tall. Of the remaining 24, 10 more weigh less than the required 195 pounds. Uh, they weighed too little. Six of the remaining players ran over a 4'540", including the anonymous Richard Sherman. Of the remaining eight cornerbacks, three can't lift the required 225 pounds 15 times. No remaining quarterback after that recorded a sub 4 20-yard shuttle. So names like Patrick Peterson, Prince Makamura, Cortez Allen, Razai Dowling, Jimmy Smith, Brian Maxwell, they actually wouldn't have passed the standards and they're not considered draftable. 
seems promising, but uh, these guys all seem promising, but fall somehow short. Outside of Richard Sherman, it does seem like this batch of cornerbacks has been largely unremarkable. Sherman is a different kind of cornerback altogether, so I'm not surprised he's busted the template. So I'm going to make a blanket statement. If I take the standards to heart and trust there is no rounding numbers when they're being recorded to the hunter's place, i.e. 4.02 seconds, then I'd say not one single cornerback in the 2011 draft projected very well. Even Patrick Peterson runs a slow 20-yard shuttle. I also wonder, applying the standards firmly, I eliminated every cornerback from my draft board. My standards too high? This cornerback class? No good. One freak does not a draft class make. Future post material is Richard Sherman, the tallest cornerback to ever be elected to a Pro Bowl. Next time I'll continue my search to put together a board of the 2011 draft based on measurables using the criteria, criteria illustrated by Bird Dog 26 in his post. Uh, I have a link to it, um, at least in my blog. So far I've eliminated all the cornerbacks from 2011. Here's a link to my spreadsheet. It's in the, uh, if you go to my video description on YouTube, you'll have a link to uh, Google Docs where I have shared a spreadsheet of all the combine results of 2011. Here's a fun fact, or a couple of fun facts to wrap up this blog post. Brian Waters had 86 receptions in college, listed at tight end while in North Texas. I actually hear he played a lot of fullback there too, something like an H-back. He rushed six total times for a 4.5 yard average and one touchdown. Maybe he'd like to come back as our thumper back. In 1999, he went to camp with the Cowboys. And I can presume Jason Garrett threw him some passes while playing backup quarterback. So that makes Brian Waters the only Cowboy on the roster to play in Dallas with Jason Garrett. Waters didn't make it through camp cuts that year, and Kansas City really helped him in his career. Alright, signing off for now. Thank you very much.